Hi guys, I'm Aidan from GTG Coaching and today I want to talk about a topic that is close to my heart which is called putting the cart before the horse. So this is referred to in a lot of different ways. I referred to as also majoring in minors, focusing on the small rocks rather than the big rocks, blah blah blah, lots of different things. I'm going to change it today and refer to it as simplicity versus complexity, which is a term which is used a lot usually with regards to certain things that are complex usually take more time there's more risk behind them versus things that are are simple in this case I'm going to take it to use and, and reinforce the idea of focusing on complex scenarios usually doesn't always do the same job as focusing on the simplistic things or focusing on what the, the most common or most likely answer is to your problem. On the board, I've got two main big areas that people focus on. I'll use another couple of examples, but I'll refer to these because they're common. Okay, so fat loss being one of them. So as an example, let's say that we've got um, Pete and Pete is a random person. I don't know this, this person in real life. I've just made the name up. So Pete uh, is pretty sedentary. He wants to lose some body fat. Uh, he has a desk job and he doesn't currently train or go to the gym and is looking to basically lose body fat and fat loss is his main concern. And so Pete does a lot of reading or speaks to his friend and his friend suggests that he try a diet. For instance, let's say the ketogenic diet, although there's tons of them, we could go for a juice diet, we could go for whatever they are. Uh, so he jumps on that. Um, he starts getting involved in fat loss specific workouts. So workouts that will specifically burn fat. You just laughed when I said that. <laughs> so workouts that specifically burn fat and things like HIT, high intensity interval training to burn said fat. So that's quite common that this would, this would happen and people go down this kind of route. So there's a lot of things in there that can lead to a lot of pseudoscience, things that are kind of incorrect and that person begins to really focus on minor things that don't really, really matter that much and don't focus on the, the majors, in this case, the things, keeping things a wee bit more simple, okay? So if you're not familiar with a ketogenic like diet, it involves high fat intake, uh, usually moderate to low protein intake, um, and then really as little carbs as you can get away with. In reality, for someone like Pete, he probably doesn't understand energy balance. He probably doesn't know that if you want fat loss, you need to expend more energy than you take in. And that is really the, the fundamental principle. You cannot get around that one. That's what all diets are based upon and they manipulate that variable in one way or another, but that is what they are manipulating. So rather than think that it is a case of energy balance, he begins to believe that carbohydrates are an issue and they are possibly the devil. And he is also telling his friends about this, which then leads to that going further on down the line, okay? Some people have preferences, and that's where it becomes a tool. So if you maybe do prefer a high fat intake, a ketogenic diet becomes a tool in order to create a calorie deficit and you know, manipulate energy balance. So focus on ketogenic diet as if thinking that carbohydrates are a problem without understanding energy balance is putting the cart before the horse. Okay, so he's done that first off. The next thing is he's sedentary, so he's jumping into fat loss specific workouts and high intensity interval training with little to no background, having sat at the desk for a long period of time, doing very complex movement patterns that will likely lead to injury and probably perform, so not really ingraining any good movement patterns. And what he could just do is move more. So that would be walking to and from work, um, moving around during the day, and that will increase energy expenditure quite a lot and again, affect energy balance without having to do anything kind of crazy. He doesn't have a structured or progressive program, so he isn't working towards anything, he isn't building on something, he isn't building up strength, tolerance, robustness. He's believing that certain workouts will tap into fat loss, um, while other ones won't. And this is a really common misconception that people get, that they think that there are actual training sessions that will burn more fat than anything else, which, long story short, doesn't really occur. And 
energy in the form of food, whether fat, carbohydrates, are all burnt at a variable degree depending on what your body requires, but they're all burnt consistently. It just varies in the approach. There isn't one part that gets ramped down, the other one gets ramped up. It's a case of your body chooses that depending on how quickly it needs the available energy. If you go do a purely weight training based uh, session, um, you will burn a various, am various amount of fat and carbohydrate during that. And if you do more of a cardiovascular based session, you'll do the exact same thing. When it comes to fat loss, the only thing you really need to be massively concerned about was which one created the greatest energy demand. And that's all there is, but there is no specific fat loss. Uh, training session or, or workout that you can do. Better to have something that's structured and leads to result over time, things that you can build towards, give your training a focus, that kind of idea, give you some sort of structure. And yeah, that's about it. So if we flip over from there, muscle gain. So I'll make up another random name. So let's go to keep things fair. Let's go for Margaret. So Margaret is looking for a lot of muscle gain. Um, didn't go for stereotypes there, if you just noticed. So, She's looking for a lot of muscle gain, okay? She's gone in the aspect of looking at drop sets, failure sets, taking muscle to exhaustion. Um, there's an awful lot of complexity within her training sessions. She's doing like 30 exercises. Um, she's very focused on her post-workout nutrition. She's got very good post-workout shakes, pays a lot of attention to the protein powder that she buys and focuses on all these areas without really understanding that, again, we have an aspect of energy balance. So in order to gain muscle mass, you need to have a, be taking in more calories than you are burning or have a higher, um, I guess a higher energy balance. Most of the time, there are specifics where this doesn't matter if you have an awful lot of body fat, but most of the time you need to take in more calories than you're expending. And again, there's tools in order to be able to do this, but focusing on a specific diet, such as in this case, keto or something that makes you do something that uh, idolizes, idolizes um, maybe eating a very, very specific way, cutting out food groups, things like that. They're all tools for specific people. For the idea of muscle gain, your main thing is high enough calorie intake that you're eating more than you're expending energy wise and then high protein. So if you're not focused on either of these two, it doesn't really matter what post-workout shakes you're taking, how often you take them, uh, well, how often it would matter, but when exactly you're doing it, um, again, that's that's a, a minor aspect, okay? That's making things extremely complex here when there's some pretty simple um, concepts and ideas that you always have to follow. The next thing is the 30 exercises, drop sets and failures, and then you take Margaret and you say, you know, how much are you able to lift in this exercise? And they don't really know, and there's not really tracking or, or planning. Uh, don't know what the weights are being lifted. You're not following a progressive program. So the only way to really gain muscle is to over load the muscles and you do that by gradually adding sets or reps or else adding load from session to session or as frequently as you can so you have a structured program that follows progressive overload progressively increasing the stress that's placed on the muscle it's very hard to do that if you don't track sessions and all you really focus on is job sets and figure sets and things like this and taking your body to exhaustion and that's what your plan is in terms of increasing muscle mass you can find lots of examples in this in different ways. You take it within like a movement basis. If somebody has a lot of niggles and groans and pains and things, they'll begin to focus upon um, maybe exercises or training sessions that involve an awful lot of movement, maybe going to see physios, that aspect, but most of their day spent being sedentary. So they don't think about just getting up and moving around more and making that easy. Or the idea that they are very sore and stiff, so they'll ramp up their cardio from going from being sedentary to doing an awful lot of cardiovascular activity, rather than thinking, maybe I should just move around more. So again, just being aware of whether you're putting the cart before the horse, and when you're facing this scenario, asking yourself, like, what's probably the simplest or most straightforward thing that I need to do here? Be affected by a couple of things. So attitude biases and deflection. So if you are someone who did a ketogenic diet before, and I'm not trying to bash these, I've done several of them, they are very useful. But if you have done this and gain results in terms of fat loss without really understanding energy balance, you'll probably go and tell all your friends that that's what they should do. And then that will be your bias. And your attitude towards that will be, this is what works and this is only what works without remembering that you are 
n equals one, you're a sample of one. And what worked for you probably won't work for everybody. And a lot of times, it definitely won't work for everybody. So that's something to take into account is and what's your attitude and biases to things you've done. And in relation to other people, do you then try and share those biases or are you taking information off of someone who is very biased towards an idea? And then finally is deflection, um, which also actually does tie in with attitude and biases. If you believe that something is going to work, then you're going to follow that, okay? So you're really, you're always going to go along that way. Or if you don't want to do something because it seems very difficult and challenging to do and uncomfortable, a lot of the times people will deflect from there and they'll find other ways to justify going down to a route or a path of least resistance, which seems much more straightforward. So again, to come back to the ketogenic diet, the idea of just cutting out carbohydrates sounds much, much easier than understanding the energy balance, but you do fall into a trap where you begin to demonize a food group, such as carbohydrates, and you never really understand what exactly it is that works for you, um, how your body tends to handle food. You never really understand energy balance. So these are the two main examples I'm gonna use here, which then again can be affected, affected from a psychological standpoint. What's your attitude? What are your biases? And do you tend to deflect whenever things become quite uncomfortable? Okay, so that's all I wanna talk about that. So just being aware of putting the cart before the horse. Going from being sedentary to an awful lot of cardiovascular activity rather than thinking maybe I should just move around more. So again, just being aware of whether you're putting the cart before the horse and when you're facing a scenario, asking yourself like what's probably the simplest or most straightforward thing that I need to do here.